everyone. This is three questions with the, the Lauren Kaufman. That's right. I actually threw it in the V. Lauren, it's actually, you've been on the podcast before, so it's good to see you again. How is, uh, you are a brand new assistant principal, right? Yes, I am. I, I know that because we just talked for like an hour. But We did. I'm like, really? <laughs> this, right? is part, this is part two of the podcast. <laughs> right, yeah. The other, the other is, the, is behind the paywall, the, the secret podcast, right? Yeah. So, hey, Lauren, before we even get into the three questions, there's two things I want to ask you. How, how is it being an assistant principal? How is that going so far in, in 2021? which is being very different from when I was the system principal. How's it going so far? Yeah. You know what? I have to say uh, the trajectory of my career has been absolutely amazing. And I was so ready for this. Um, this is a great challenge. Um, and I love learning about this role. Mm. I love the people I work with. I love the community. I love the kids. The teachers are amazing. Um, so this experience has been very rewarding even in these challenging times, even in 2021, um, I always make the best of things. You know, we, we work through challenges, we're solutions oriented, and it's about the people you're with, really. They make my day and the kids, of course. So one of the things I appreciate about, about well, actually, one of the myriad of things I appreciate about you is not only that you are a constant learner, but I also think that you document your learning. And uh, I, I follow your blog. I read your blog. It's fantastic. And people really appreciate it. And it's one of the reasons I actually got you to write a chapter in because of a teacher. That's right. And so Lauren, uh, you wrote an amazing chapter. Uh, and I know a lot of people resonate with what you had to share. So we're going to talk about what you shared in the book, because it is one of the three questions. But uh, just tell people like kind of like, you know, I asked, I asked you, you were actually, I think you were, you were basically one of the first people I talked to about it. I actually came up with the idea on a Saturday night. Yes. yes. Right. And I yes. just said, can you talk? And you were like, oh, let's be honest, you were out, you were out. And I was, like, I was out to dinner with friends and it's Saturday yeah. night. And George is like texting me. He says, Hey Lauren, you have some time to chat. I'm <laughs> saying, wow, this is a Saturday night. He says, actually let's FaceTime. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't wait to get home, actually, because I was just curious why is George <laughs> texting me on a Saturday night right. randomly. And uh, yeah, that's when you pop the question. Mm, you write right. a chapter right. in this book. And I was like, I was looking behind me like, me? <laughs> you want me to write a chapter in the book? Why? Uh, you know, well, and uh, I was honored. I was so, truly honored. So just so you know, okay, that so that idea wasn't like I was sitting on it Wednesday and then slowly came around to it. It was like probably 10 minutes before I text you. I'm like, Hey, this might actually be a good idea. And then I started writing names out. And then I like, I know I have access to you really quickly. I could text you. And so like, I think you maybe Laney were for sure the first, first two out of five people for sure. If you know that I asked, and I think it wasn't just that I asked, it was that, I wanted to know, like, is this a stupid idea? Like, is this actually a good idea? And let's be honest, you were like, eh, I don't know if this is a good idea at first. No, I didn't say that. I was I really, I really Are enjoyed the idea. Yes. Oh maybe, oh, maybe it was Lainey. Maybe it was Lainey who did that. But yeah, like, I, there's a lesson. There's a lesson here. And I, I think a lot of times, I think this is partly you and this is partly me, is that I think both of us will jump into things and figure it out. And I think a lot of people try to figure th thing, everything out before they jump into it. And then they sometimes never jump into it. Right. So it was kind of like, I'm going to just throw it out there, see what happens. And it was like such an honor to have you write this. And you are such an amazing writer too, which I really Aww. appreciate. You are. Thank you. Yeah, love coming your, from you, love that you. means a lot. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It no, does. I'm, it does. I'm a podcaster now. I don't, I'm not a writer anymore. I'm a podcaster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I do listen, love writing, George. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, if it wasn't for you, and 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 I am speaking very candidly and honestly, mm -hmm. as I always do, um, you were the one who challenged me. I'll never forget it. To, I did challenge you in front of you everybody. Challenged me in front of a mentor program <laughs> that I used to facilitate. Mm -hmm. uh, in front of all of the new teachers and their mentors, you said, "Lauren, you need to have your own platform for a blog." And then um, you inspired me. 
and I started writing. And one of the things I remember most is mm. being a little cautious and fearful of what would I have to share that no one has seen before. And you said, Lauren, that's not why we write. We write to reflect on our own learning. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It's a journey. And that gave me the courage and confidence to go on that journey. And I haven't stopped since. I think I've slowed not down a little bit recently. Yeah. I'm about to publish a blog uh, later tonight, um, but I'm excited about that. But it's really helped me become a better writer and even a better speaker, a better thinker, a better learner, um, a better reader, because I'm always looking for new ideas uh, to be inspired by. So I appreciated that so much. And I was still surprised when you asked me to write in Because of a Teacher. Uh, and what a beautiful book it turned out to be. Um, that group of authors is just outstanding. I, I really look up to their work so much. I think they are just such authentic, beautiful, wonderful people. And through that journey and experience of writing for Because of a Teacher, I even connected more deeply mm -hmm. uh, with probably about a handful of the authors. And of course, I respect all the authors and know their work, but... You know, we have our own little network mm -hmm. of support, which has been tremendous for me uh, on my journey to be so, better. So uh, like, I, I know we're going to do the three questions, but I do want to build on something you just said, because I think it's really important. I actually think that, and I think this is not just for you. I think it's for myself. I think it's for anybody that does this, is that you, you said this, that you became a better thinker. And I think part of it, uh, there is a, a quote I shared in Innovator's Mindset by, Cl I'm pretty sure it's Clive Thompson, and I'll paraphrase it as close as possible. He said, anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when you have to face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. And so this notion of like becoming a better thinker, when I actually write a blog post, I try to already think about like, what will be the pushback to what I'm saying and how do I address it? So I don't have that, right? Like, I don't want to just, so you, you actually develop an empathy, you have a thinking. And so like when you're in that role of assistant principal and you're sharing ideas and you know, your staff might see them, right? Cause, and I think a lot of times like staff will read administrator blogs, but they'll never tell you they read them. Cause it's like, it's like a dirty little secret. It's kind of weird that people do that. I, I don't know many staff who are like, Oh, I totally read my principal's blog, but I know they do. And I think it actually, you're, you're cognizant of that because like how you are presenting yourself to the world, you know, the people closest to you are also looking at that. So I think that process of writing, uh, does help you become, you know, a better leader, a better teacher. It's something I've always advocated for it. Just, it might, it may not be writing for some people, but it could be podcasting it could be you know sharing you know on tiktok whatever that you do right. have to think about your ideas so let's get to the three questions and so the very first question is and especially because you inspire so many people through your blog when you think of a teacher who inspired you um who is one person that sticks out and why this one was really easy for me. So this is my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Roth. I actually wrote a blog post about her, I think uh, maybe last year, um, called Eternal Memories Manifest Hope for the Future. Uh, I knew at a very, very young age that Mrs. Roth was the kind of teacher who knew how to connect with the hearts and minds of children. And I knew that because she was always thinking of new and better ways to do things. Her lessons were always engaging. She always included her students into the conversation. I felt like I owned my learning in her class, but here's a fun little story about her. So she used to carry around this teacher resource book. And in the book, she used to do lots of highlighting and I would see her highlighting things and putting post-it notes in this book. And I was kind of a shy, timid uh, little girl. And I finally got the courage to go and ask Mrs. Roth, what is this book? Because I knew even then as a fourth grader that she was using ideas in this book hmm. to, um, to inspire some new and better ways to teach writing. So she says, oh, this, is, this book is called In the Middle. It's by Nancy Atwell. It's still a classic book that many mm -hmm. teachers turn yep. to for literacy. So I asked my parents for the holidays if they would buy me this book in when fourth grade. Book? <laughs> when I'm in fourth grade, yes. So they bought me in the middle and I started reading it as a fourth grader and I started highlighting in it like Mrs. Roth. I really wanted to emulate everything she did. Huh. You know, kids are always watching. Right. what their teachers are doing, right? So I really looked up to her that much that I started doing that. 
Um, so that's how my love of learning really started. She really inspired me. And here is the fun part. So when I was, there are a few fun parts to this. So when I was hired in my former district, one of my supervisors says, oh, who wants to go to a Nancy Atwell con um, conference? Mm -hmm. And I was one of the first to reply. I was like, oh my goodness, yes, I'm going to a Nancy Atwell conference, you know, in person, I'll get to meet her. I end up bringing the book in the middle to the conference that I had for really? fourth grade. I tell Nancy Atwell the story during a break. I got the courage to go up to speak to her as a young, you know, new teacher. Right. She loved the story. Her face lit up. She says, wait a minute, you were in fourth grade when you read my book? I said, yes. And I brought the same book. It turns out we I lost that book in Hurricane Sandy. My house got decimated in Hurricane Sandy and I had this book in the basement. So I, I, I lost the book, but hmm. I, I'll, I'll always have the memory close to my heart. And something amazing about Linda Roth, mm -hmm. who I'm talking about right now, is that she retired as an assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. And every day since I've gotten this new job as an assistant principal, or every week, I should say now, she texts me, Lauren, how's it going? Is right. it going okay? So I still keep in touch with her to this day. We speak all the time. And she's a mentor to me now. In okay, fourth so grade and as an adult. <laughs> I love that. And I love that point of like, you know, basically kids are watching what we're doing and how we connect and things like that too. And that that is absolutely amazing. So I am, this is going to be a double shout out. So Linda Roth, if you're listening, and Nancy Atwell. Big shout outs. That's amazing. I actually know, I, well, I know that name too. So uh, I hope, I, I guarantee you, uh, Linda Roth is listening to this right now. So it's awesome that you shared that story. And it's so, it's so incredible. You're connected too. And I, I absolutely yes. love that. Yes. And I just want to say, you know, every interaction, big and small, has the potential to become a story and leave Lord. an impact on the legacy that we want to leave behind. So Linda left this incredible le legacy. Mm -hmm. And I always think about that when I'm speaking with people, you know, um, you know, it's not like I'm thinking and calculating every move, but right. You know, I want to be intentional with people um, because you never know how it's going to impact their future. Yeah. And one of, one of my mantras, I try to be the best part of everyone's day that I interact with. And I fail miserably sometimes, but I still, that's still a goal every single day. Now you are a new administrator or actually new assistant principal. I know you kind of have an administrative role, but you're, you're AP now. So it's a little bit different. You think of all the administrators you've connected with over the years, whether as a student, as a teacher, like who is somebody who stood out, who stands out to you and why? You can't no. use you can't use Linda Roth for both answers. No, that's, that's no I no, I cannot. Um, listen, there have been many administrators throughout my journey who have really paved the way for my growth and development as a human being and as an educator. This was really difficult for me to pick one. But what I will say, when I think of all of the ones who have really impacted who I am in a positive way, they all have the same or similar qualities. They're very human-centered in nature. They're very empathetic. They're very supportive. And you know what they all have? They were able to recognize my gifts and the gifts of others and elevate those people and encourage them to share their gifts with others because they saw those leadership qualities within me. So I have to pick, I, you know, I, I can't pick one without the other. I have to go for now with um, Dr. Paul Romanelli, who is in Long Beach. He's the assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. I Paul, I know Paul. Paul's awesome. Yes, you do. And, you, know, um, you know, Lori Beard is another one. She's the principal of Long Beach Middle School. Both of these, so, yeah, gotta, gotta give them shout outs. Um, and, and, and the reason why is that I always felt in every interaction I've had with them that they um, don't approach things like, like they have a title or, mm -hmm. you know, there's not this hierarchy kind of feel. It's like we are, the, 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 the playing field is leveled. We're having a conversation, human being to human being, educator to educator. We are thinking partners together. They are respecting and valuing, even when I was a teacher, even when I was an instructional coach, 
what I had to say. Right. They were really capitalizing on my experience and not only my experience, I look at the way people not only treat me, but treat others. Mm-hmm. And they're the types of leaders who treat others with that same respect mm-hmm. um, and, and, and empathetic heart. So um, those, those are the people who, who really inspired me. And they also always gave me um, ammunition to kind of lead and just go with my ideas. I had an idea, Lauren, go ahead, go do it. Let's see what happens. If it doesn't work, right. we'll shift gears, we'll pivot. So I get it. So it's weird that you're talking about this because I was thinking about this term empathy this morning. I was literally when I was uh, exercising, I was thinking about this, uh, and maybe because someone was listening on TV, you know, whatever. Uh, it's it's seemingly really easy to have empathy for people that you easily connect with, right? Uh, it's easy to have empathy with people that agree with all the things that you think, right? Sure. Empathy really matters when you don't have things in common with other people, right? When you maybe have very different gifts, you have very different places where you can grow. And I think when we talk about empathy, this is something that is a, a mainstay in education and in life. It is that we have to understand people with different viewpoints, how they got to that point uh, and, and what, what they're sharing. And I think this is this is something that that we have to, you know, be very cognizant of, because like I said, it, like I, I would, you know, as an administrator, and I can't say I was always great at this. I, at first I really struggled. If you don't believe the things that I believe you're wrong. Right. And as I've grown and progressed, it's like, okay, so why does this person believe the thing they do? And a lot of that is like me asking questions. Uh, you know, like why, why is their philosophy and education this way and totally different from mine? How did they get to this point? Where am I wrong? Where are we actually connected with? And so empathy is like an easy thing to have when you just agree with somebody, right? Because you understand sure. their experiences because you might have it, right? So I think those really great leaders, like, you know, the, the ones you just mentioned, they are looking for gifts and people that might not be like them, might, you know, have different viewpoints, different experiences that they bring to the table. So I think it's, I think it's a really good thing to focus on not only in leadership, but life, right? So yes, I love that. Yes. And, and Linda would always say to me, Lauren, I know everybody says great minds think alike. She said, but I think great minds think differently. She says that to me all the time. I like and it. I love that. And I share it all the time because it's so true. That you is know? like, that's, that's Linda Roth. That's Linda Roth. Yes. That's a, that's a double shout out. Okay. So the last question is also the question that you answered in the book because of a teacher. Now I'm going to read the very first per, uh, paragraph. So the, the last question is, um, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? I think this ties in beautifully. Um, we've all experienced significant moments in time that have transformed our perspectives and altered the paths we walked. These significant moments often engender a multitude of feelings that encourage us to make choices that impact the direction of our lives. These moments can be difficult to see in real time because we become so consumed with the experience itself. Awesome first paragraph, and you can read more and because of a teacher. So <laughs> just just look for it. You'll see it in the links below. So Lauren, go, go a little bit deeper into that. So like you think about yourself as a first year teacher, especially with all the learning that's happening right now. What advice would you give to yourself, you know, if you can go back in time? Gosh, um, there's so much advice. And, and when you asked me to write this chapter, I kept thinking about how can I capture everything I want to say in one chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, Because to be honest with you, I feel like the way I lead and the way I have been on this educational journey is I look at every year as a first year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I stay on the cutting edge of best practice. That's how I become better. That's how I can elevate others and make them better. So what are some of the things I think about? Always keep kids at the heart of decision making. That's why we're here. It always comes back to kids, right? Um, So we can differ in our perspectives. We can have different approaches to teaching and learning or management of the classroom or building a classroom community. Um, But if kids are at the center of the conversation and and you use the children to guide you um, in everything you do, uh, you really can't go wrong. You know, get to know your learners. That's another piece of advice. You know, yes, there's a curriculum to cover, there's a scope and sequence, but 
the significant learning happens when you're connecting to the hearts and minds of children. They want to know that you care about them. Um, when they know you care about them, they will work for you mm -hmm. and in meaningful ways too. So that would be another one. Um, seek out professional learning opportunities. That's another big one. I think when I was a younger teacher, I used to kind of wait for them to come to me. Like, oh, my, you know, my school district will provide those opportunities for me. And that happens. Yeah, school districts do that. But because we have different learners in front of us every year and we work with different colleagues um, and things are, are constantly evolving in, in the educational landscape that we live in, mm -hmm. um, seek those opportunities out. You know, if you know your learners and you, you're able to notice and name their needs, then find those opportunities that are going to benefit you and your students. That looks different for everyone, just like success looks different for everyone. That's another piece of advice. Don't compare yourself to other people. Right. Um, Theodore Roosevelt said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Once you start doing that, um, your mind starts running wild. It's mm -hmm. like you look at the glass half empty. What is it that I'm not doing instead of all the amazing things that you are doing? Um, use the room to share ideas. Don't be afraid to ask for support. Find that network of support. There are always going to be people around you who have amazing strengths and will be there to support you. Get to know that community. Get to know who you can go to for help. And also, even if you find an interaction with someone who you're around to be unfavorable, mm -hmm. maybe you're not enjoying that, that's something to learn from too. Right. So capitalize on those moments as well. They're going to help you. So you, what you, okay. So this is going to seem like a weird segue here of what I'm mm -hmm. about to say. So I, I dabble in the stock market, right? And I know you're like, what does that have to do with anything? Right? Mm -hmm. So the, the best stocks to invest in are, are actually companies that continuously that are established, but continuously evolve. Right? So I'll give you an example of a company that's not a good investment, Blockbuster, right? Blockbuster, you know, actually people don't know this. They, they said no to Netflix. Like Netflix approached them and said, would you be interested in buying us? And Blockbuster said, we're good, right? So you think about that because they were not necessarily willing to evolve and grow. And so as a, so you think about those companies that, you know, the, the Apples, the Amazons, things like that too, that, you know, evolve and, and, and develop different uh, ideas, things over time, and they're always staying relevant. And I think that 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 is true in education as well, that it doesn't mean that you don't have, uh, you know, solid roots of the work that you do, but you are also willing to continuously grow. When I used to interview people, I'd always look what I call for the sponge factor. Are you willing to absorb information and then actually take it and do and it, you know, and then actually do something with it out. So I'd always say like, I am willing to go with someone who's maybe not as great a teacher now who is willing to grow than someone who's really good, who who's done, you know, learning. Cause, cause I know eventually that other person will surpass them. So I think that's, yeah. that's one thing I want to point out to you because I think, you know, it, it's not just in, in education, that's in so many facets of life. That's what we yeah. are, you know, people that continuously develop. Uh, the other thing I want to point out to you really quick, I actually, I actually think, uh, uh, that you writing a chapter in because of a teacher was very limiting, right? Because I actually think, and I'm throwing it out there, that there is an entire book in you. And so I see that in your future and just put Thank it you, out George. there. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. I know. I know you, you, you're you so good to me like that. Um, yeah. I appreciate you so much. Um, you know, that is something I'm thinking about very deeply. Um, and everything yes. that I write, yes. I'm thinking idea. about the angle I want to take, you know, there's so many good ideas. I eventually write my book. I'm, I'm just, I want to make it, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm a person who loves philosophy and research mm -hmm. and all of that, but I am a practitioner at heart. Right. I love being able to put great ideas into practice and making them work for me. Um, I like taking the best from everybody, you know, yeah. like that's another piece of advice. Take the best of everybody you've learned from and make it your own. How does this work in my world? Um, and that's what I want to do when I write something. I want to put something into, I want to put a book into someone's hands where they could say, wow, this right. is awesome. And I can make this work for me. So um, I appreciate you and you inspiring me 
to write and and you share so many ideas, George. Um, you're always getting me to think and you're always getting me to think differently too. You're always challenging me and, and that's one of the great. reasons I like being friends with you. <laughs> great, great minds think different. Right? Is that what it is? Something like that? Yes. The saying is usually great minds think alike. Well, yeah. great minds think differently. Yes. Love it. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for being on. Everyone, thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay, have a wonderful day. There you go. You like the theme music? Did you have theme music the first time around? I didn't All have right. this was the music. Yeah, there you go. Bye, everybody. Because of a teacher. Check out <laughs> Bye. Lauren. Thank you.